Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to a very interesting case. We have here a, uh, a diabetic patient or technically pre-diabetic or borderline and uh, you're going to see a few complications in this earwax removal, notably two areas of the ear canal where the skin is deteriorated and then there's bone there, exposed bone. And I thought this would be a nice case to upload because of late we, we've had a lot of questions come through about diabetes. And I've mentioned diabetes many, many times in previous videos as a risk factor and as a, you know, a possible explanation for what we're seeing, particularly sort of the, the gnarly infection videos, things like that. But I've never really explained why. I just kind of mentioned it in passing. So I thought I would explain it in this video because I think it's relevant. So uh, what is diabetes and why do we care? Why do we ask about it? And it is on our consent form. Before we do microsuction, we go through the standard checklist. Are you in pain? Do you have vertigo, etc., etc.? And we do ask whether they have diabetes. And if they say yes, we ask which type is under control and so on. So there's a little bit of bone just there, but I'll, I'll probe that later on. So there's a little bit of bone down here as well, which I'll just uncover. So see right here as I lift that up? There we go. So I'll expose it a little bit more in a minute. So diabetes is a systemic condition, it's a chronic condition, other than gestational diabetes, but that's sort of out of the scope of this video. So type 1 and type 2 diabetes are chronic. And it's characterised by having high blood sugar levels, or high levels of glucose circulating around your blood. So, you know, if you think about, if you eat a spoonful of sugar, or lots of pasta, or rice, and so on and so forth, bread, they are basically all broken down by your body into the same thing, which is glucose, okay? It's just that bread and pasta, for example, are complex carbs, so they take longer for your body to break down into glucose rather than a spoonful of sugar. And if you eat lots of this stuff, that will eventually result in a high level of glucose, blood sugar level, going around your body, and then as a result of that, in a healthy individual, your pancreas will produce insulin. Okay, and insulin is a sort of chemical instruction to the cells of your body to take in sugar. So if your if you pancreas releases insulin normally, then your blood sugar levels should go down as the cells take it in from your blood. Now in type 1 diabetics, the pancreas doesn't produce enough insulin. The beta cells in your pancreas don't produce enough. There's a shortfall or they don't produce it at all. And that's the kind of diabetic patient that you might think of as is in injecting insulin on a daily basis which is perhaps a little easier to manage per se than type two. Type two, which is more common, is where it doesn't matter if your pancreas produces enough insulin or not, the cells of your body don't respond to the insulin. So in other words, there's a level of insulin resistance there. And that can be managed by diet or metformin and so on and so forth, but it is, it is I would say, the more common of the two, particularly in elderly patients. A little bit of live audio here. Damn it. Is it like eroding sort of thing? Yeah. Yes, definitely. No granulation, which is a good sign. But I, I can, yeah, it's unmistakable. When you touch bone, mm -hmm. goodness me, it's quite a large area. When right. you touch bone, um, looks like dead skin actually, but the feeling you get in your wrist is very much like a brick. It's solid. Okay. It's a diabetes under control. Um, she's only been type 2 from. Um, when we last saw you, yeah, she'd only just been into the threshold, so she's the last HB one C was it wasn't mega high, so she's on no treatment for it. She's on mm. no metformin. Diet? Is it? Yes, yeah, diet controlled, but I don't think in the home they're totally, you know, very strict with it. If you know what I mean. Right. We might have to. I don't know, do something. This might be a, a, a sign that things are a little bit more... Serious in the world. Yeah, I thought I'd just give you a little bit of live audio because I think it's interesting and you could hear me talking to the daughter there about the diabetes. The daughter mentioned something interesting. She mentioned an HbA1c test, which is a blood test that doctors use to check for diabetes. So, and what they're testing for is how much haemoglobin is glycated. So, and this is one of the reasons why having diabetes and control is such a problem because, the, you know, these molecules of glucose that circulate around your body, they will eventually stick to things. So they glycate things. 
and they stick to proteins and that's what they're looking for. How much of your haemoglobin in your blood has glucose stuck to it? And you know, the thing that we, that we really care about when, we, when we're asking about diabetes is if it's uncontrolled, that tends to cause microvascular disease or microvascular angiopathy. So angios is, is Greek for vessel and pathio is related to pathios, which is Greek for suffering. So micro, small blood vessel problem. And what you get is the, 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 the glu these glucose molecules, which are always there and often spill, out, spill over into your urine. So you have sweet urine if you have uncontrolled diabetes. Is It's damaging all blood vessels in the body, but particularly the very, very fine small capillaries that perfuse tissues. So the, the very, very fine blood vessels that give oxygen and nutrients to the tissues of your body, and then obviously the tissues give back carbon dioxide and waste products, things like that. And if you have molecules of gl glucose sticking to proteins all over the body, that causes dysfunction in the lining of your capillaries or the vascular endothelial cells that line all the blood vessels of your body. And then you have problems whereby the, the, this inner lining of your blood vessels becomes dysfunctional and you get you know, plaques building all over the place and, and these blood vessels actually start to die off. So you have poor perfusion of tissues and that's why you know, diabetic patients sometimes, unfortunately, you, you, know, you see them losing um, feeling in their fingers, you have peripheral neuropathy and you know, they might have a, a toe or a foot amputated, things like that. That's why we worry about <coughs> retinopathy and so on and so forth. So you know, having high levels of glucose circulating around your body will eventually lead to a lot of serious, serious complications. And I rather suspect that that's what's happened here because, you know, you, obviously you have this, this area of erosion on the floor of the ear canal, but there is another area just to the right-hand side, which I've not picked up on yet, but I will do in a moment. And I'll share some more live audio with you. So I also note that as I'm kind of debriding all this dead skin away, it's not hurting the patient. And it, it should be, really. She should be able to feel this, but she isn't. So. So yeah, we, we, we see micro vessel disease, microvascular disease. And I rather suspect, and it's not just the, the glycation of, of glucose sticking to things. Glu um, high, having high levels of glucose also increase the level of free radicals in your blood or what some people call ROS or reactive oxygen species. So this special lining that I'm talking about, your vascular endothelial, endothelial lining, those cells produce something called nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is very important for you know, the regulation and health of that, that lining, but also it helps, you, it helps your blood vessels expand when they need to, okay? So if you have lots of nitric oxid, uh, oxide being produced and it's just getting glycated all the time, then that produces free radicals. Now, if you're not sure what a free radical is, it's basically a molecule that is highly reactive and, and damages cells in your body. And in fact, that's why whenever you go to the supermarket and you see, you know, healthy, you know, orange juices and grape juices, you know, high in antioxidants, that's what the antioxidants are trying to do is compact, uh, combat those free radicals that are zooming around your body. In actual fact, you know, drinking a litre of orange juice each day is not healthy. If you're diabetic, you should, definitely shouldn't be doing that. But, um, you know, th th that's just another reason why, you know, having uncontrolled diabetes is actually a very, very, very serious problem. And if someone comes into your clinic and says, well, you know, I have diabetes, but you know, I don't really care about it and so on and so forth, you probably should tell them, you don't have to be an expert in diabetes or a diabetic nurse or a doctor. You just have to say, you should probably have a conversation. Go back to your doctor and have a conversation about it and figure out a plan because it's not something that can be ignored. I'll just share another bit of live audio with you. That appears to be the only area that okay. I can see. Yeah, that might be an area. This looks like an area. Sorry, sorry, my bad. That feels like bone. This is an area right here. It's in more than one place, damn okay. it. That looks like an area. You know, the fact, that it's, the fact that it's in two areas and those areas are far away from each other, I think gives sort of more weight to the fact that this has been 
this is linked and perhaps been caused by the diabetes because it's not just a little area on the floor of the ear canal which I suppose could be explained away by trauma <coughs> but the fact that there's multiple sites and, and possibly a few more that I've missed the fact that there's multiple sites kind of gives credence to the fact that actually so something needs to be done something needs to be done and I have um, pinged this patient through to ENT quite urgently and the ENT as per usual will, will debride everything again and instill some ointment but that's been done very very quickly um, I don't know if those areas will re-epithelialize basically the skin growing over I, I, I somewhat doubt it but at the very least it's cleanish now <laughs> it's not an amazing job but I was less interested in cleaning the drum and more interested in exposing those areas um, to then get the patient proper treatment. If I wanted to clean the drum off because it's all sludged up, I probably would have irrigated it in a normal patient or put some bicarbonate and suck it out. But again, because there's areas of exposed bone, I can't really put anything in there. So uh, there we go. I hope you found this very brief talk on diabetes interesting. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you guys on the next video.